Barrett oh, and oh, Nana. All right, go. that's was, the debut of Nana. Personally, as a Nana player, I'm very happy to see it on the competitive stage. But Onik will come back and answer that with a Yuzong last pick. Wow, a lot of dive good laner against the Arlet, but it's gonna be the Ruby in the XP. Yo, Rashi, why mm -hmm. haven't we seen Nana at all? Like, this is the first Nana pick slash ban of Season 13. I think the Nana became a bit more vulnerable once they removed the movement speed buff when you turn into a Demolina, right? That means that you're invulnerable, but then you're very easily caught up. So it only really works when your team isn't planning on moving backwards, right? And that is exactly what I think Geek Fam are looking at. They want the crowd control, they want the AoE damage to match up Onik in those big team fights, but they don't plan on hiding backwards the same way Onik does. So this is going to be, once again, a forward-moving composition. And looking at the ratings, though, this time, Onik is winning on most of the fronts. Is this a sign, Mirko? Let's see if it is a sign. We're going to see the wings of freedom of MPL Indonesia in Season 13. Garuda! That's our national bird. As he takes us into the LOD, the land of dawn. Ladies and gentlemen, game number two. Can the porcupine spike down the big geek boys? Or will the big geek boys come back and force a third game from the porcupines? Or will we have to delay it just a bit? Because climax, we have to wait, you know? Just like the movie, Dune 1, Dune 2, we gotta wait for Dune 3. All right. I haven't watched Dune 2. Same. Haven't even watched Dune 1 properly. So. What? It's so good. Is it? May your blade but chip and shatter. Whoa. Anyway. I have no anyway, idea what that means. Anyway. What Mirko is trying to say with big games and good games, we need suspense. Right. I mean, right? good things We're come... Building suspense. Good things comes to those who wait. Yeah. So we get a tour. Of the Land of Dawn. Of the Land of Dawn. As you can here see here, this is the base. This is where people spawn in the game. Okay, and then where are we going now? Well, we're going the to the top lane. What's going... the name of the creep whoa, 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 whoa. there? What? What's the name of the creep? But ladies and gentlemen, we are going straight back into the game here. 30 seconds has elapsed. And we are going to see whether or not Sans goes for the normal build or his special build. Game number two of this best of this series between Onik as well as Geek Fan. I'm gonna be careful and take a look at Boots. Boots' emblem, man. It's a quantum charge, not a brave smite. So in the lane, less sustained, but afterwards, he's gonna be a menace just chasing down the backline. As Onik can secure the lethal right there, already a small victory that usually does add up. And you can see the clear battle has begun. And I do think Vexana is just top tier in that department. And looking at the other side, right? A boy on the Nana. Goes for the flicker. So despite all the CC coming in from Onyx, he's still confident enough to Ooh. go in for that spell, but Hazel's confident in this. Oh, nom nom nom. Detonus, welcome, Hazel. First blood picked up by Samsung Galaxy. What a great gank there. Great awareness from Hazel to just hold on and channel that ultimate. Wait for Boots to really use all his cards and then go in. Hyri though trying to try and counter with the aggression. But Nothing really big happening just yet. Looking at the mid lane, both taking magic penetration boots. They're trying to get for some early damage here. Might be contesting for this turtle. I do think it does favor Onik though. Geek might want to be a bit careful here. I think it comes down to that level four power spike, right? Mm -hmm. Boots is a bit behind Kyrie though. A good gang into the petrified furious dive, but Luke is still able to actually flick around. Did he get the tough boots already? Yeah, he did. Wow. Super fast tough boots to get out of that position of the CC. But here we are, both of the junglers going to be getting their eyes on the next neutral objective. Turtle, half health. Black Dragon form into the back, no petrified for Boots. He is doing a good job at zoning, and my goodness, Sanchez oh. is the lead for Loyce, but Kyrie is very, very low, has to reset the turtle. It's a nom nom up with the death of his welcome, uh -oh. but Keyboy gets spat out now with the power of nature. He wants to go for a big smack onto Hazel, a wall as well. And the tree wins out against the dinosaur. Beautiful execution by Onyx there. Gonna be able to zone out the members of Geek Fam as well as get Hazel out of the board completely. Even though Kyrie was already very low on health in that earlier part of the game. The two big fighters, man, Fredrin and Yu Zong, is just such a nightmare. Especially when you just hit level four. That black dragon form definitely scattered Geek Fam away. And even though Kyrie was so so low, it was looking a bit a bit sketchy there for just a bit, but his team was able to just zone everyone out. And like we mentioned earlier, 
Looking at some of the emblems here, it's concussive blast for Kyrie in the jungle. More clear on the on these tanky fighting heroes these days. And for Boots, the quantum charge, but still the rupture for more damage and the festival of blood for a decent amount of sustain. So trying to get some movement speed and a mix of sustain at the same time. Walled. Oh my God! Not just walled. D Beloisi got deleted. That's a whole lot of burst, man. Oh my God. God. Did not expect that damage. You know what? Yeah, I was about to say, I think Sans is going for the cooldown build. Because we took a look at the emblems and it wasn't Wilderness Blessing as the second sub emblem. And then you saw just now that he picked up the Enchanted Talisman. So it's a Vexana Sans special. We'll see if he goes to the Fleeting Time. Because sometimes they go for the Enchanted Talisman into a glowing one. That's a popular build that a lot of players in the MPL, especially MPL ID, has been building so far. So we'll see if he builds through with that. But for now, Onik has a lot of damage, a lot of crowd control. And sometimes we, we barely get to finish our sentences before someone from GeekFam gets sniped out. Especially now that their roamer doesn't really have an escape tool, they have to be very careful here, especially walking towards the bushes. Okay, let's take a look at the player's gold here. CW still number one on the charts, followed by Sans. Chadera a bit behind in that lane. That was supposedly a winning lane for the carry. Almost like CW just learned from game number one, and now he knows, okay, I can't win in trades, maybe I'll farm somewhere else, I do something different. And he's really working well in the second game as the turtle spawns. Once again, Onik try and control, but look at the flank coming from Boloisky here. Puts Onik in a weird spot. Look at the burst down though. Boloisky's already super low, and Boots is flying on the way to him under the turret as well. Oh. Has the passive, gets up, but Kyrie wins out. In the retreat battle, Beloisky went 1v4 in the mid lane, no follow up. There is oh. a wild charge! Oh no! The Nana gets deleted under the turret, and now it might be even more bleak as Luke is forced to flicker out. Another burst damage coming down from CW, but he's still able to sustain out with the Brave Smite. My lord, Onyx just takes control of the situation with every single small mistake the Geek Fan makes. Darren needs to be careful there in the bottom lane for a rotation, but can you imagine the physics of the wild charge into Anana? That <laughs> yeah. must hurt. Yeah, so he's, he's so much bang. bigger, man. I'm surprised he even lands, how, considering how small the Nana is. <laughs> like, Keyboy, he doesn't care, man. He knows he lands those. And, and now, Geek, if you're, even if, you were, uh, if you're a boy right here, you got to be so concerned, man, because you thought that, okay, they used one ultimate for me, there's no way they use one more, right? But that's exactly what Onik just does. And as Geek try and go for another pickoff here, they seem to be severely limited by the movement speed, man. They're no longer as mobile, especially Hazel on the Barats. He was able to secure his own red against Kyrie earlier, but he is just struggling to be in the right spot right here in every single fight. What's his level now? Level 8 compared to Kyrie at 9. So he's not as... Maneuvery. Is that a word? Maneuvery? Okay, Maneuvery? successful. Let's go with that. Maneuver. As he was on the Mardis in the first game. But look at this. Kyrie looking to punish Boloisky. Oh no, he's already died three times. The final oh. slash and he just gets bopped by Sans. Fourth death this game. Ranger Amas in the Indo desk would usually be saying, What are you doing, Baloy? <laughs> I mean, it's brutal, right? Six minutes in, only almost seven, but it's already a 1 7. A 3,000 gold gap in the first seven minutes of the game. CW was doing good under pressure. And when he was dominated by Chidera, but look at him now. He's getting to the towers on the bottom side. He's getting to that power spike much, much quicker than in game number one. Geek, they're losing control over this entire game. Uh oh. The foot is definitely on the other shoe, man. But now for Onik, they're going to go for the objective as always. Come clean, calculated. And Geek is just nowhere ready, nowhere near ready to try and get anything here. And they let it go. There's not much they can do as Boots picks up the War Axe as well. Even more ways for Onik to just chase them and run down Geek under their, the safety of their own turrets and base. But that's a problem. Like, what are they supposed to do, right? If they want to go for a 50-50, they're already, what, 4k behind? And obviously Hazel is behind on levels as well against Kyrie. Ooh. I guess that's something great, but... A failed attempt of an initiation. Beloisky with a flicker. Final slash earlier. Not connecting CW now. Just chunking damage. Beloy very low. Luke doing the same thing right now. Trying to run away. But Boots catches him. Finds the passive. Detona's welcome into the mouth. But now it's Hazel. It's hard to wild oh. charge. With a flicker to the back. Ooh. Finds a boy. 
flickers back to safety, and now it's Chadera who's forced to run away. Sans wants to get that Terrify down. He finds the Terrify. No Eternal Guard, just a bit more poke, and Chadera will be able to walk out of this, but the turrets in the mid lane certainly won't be able to. 2 for 0 trade, a turret taken down, Onik getting everything that they asked for here in game number 2, and it's not necessarily them going out of their way, it's the counter engage that they've been able to successfully do against Geek Fam's failed attempts time and time again. They just have more options, right? If they fail their engage, they oh. have chances to do something oh. else just like that. But oh. even if it, if it works, then great. If it doesn't work, they have the wild charge, they have the black dragon form, so a lot of flexibility in how they approach these fights. And you can see a boy just struggling, man. We thought this Nana pick was going to be big with the Molina, with the crowd control, but he is struggling to figure out when and where he's supposed to use these spells. And according to the game, fun fact, if Geek Fam actually loses this, they're going to still... Nana is still going to be sitting at a 0% win rate since MPL ID season... What? Eight. 10? 8? Wow, that sucks. 2021. Oof. Man, throwback. <laughs> throwback. Well, Eterna, by the way, we have the, our answer. It's a lightning truncheon into a possibly a going one here. Sand is going for all that damage, all the burst, knowing that, for the most part, he's not targeting the front lines, right? CW has that on lock. He's targeting the back lines. He's trying to get that burst damage to help with the pickoff potential, with the threat. So, lightning truncheon it is. And Geek are just stuck turtling, even though, honestly, they don't really have the best of high ground weave here either. So they are just stuck waiting for a chance that Onik just is not giving to them. So still respectful. No fleeting time. Nope. From San. Not yet, at least. Not yet, at least. <laughs> right as their momentum got derailed in game one, mm -hmm. it almost feels like they completely lost like their mental game, man. Game two, it right. just feels like a stomp, and it feels like maybe they're tilted oh. again. Luke, I think, has missed. More I I'm offenders than he has hit this game so far. Valoi! The one big brain play could save them. It did get Sons and oh my god, a boy with a flicker forward. 0-5-0. Zero, zero. Valoi. Is he waiting for that buff? We'll have to see, man. 0-10 power spike. But, but a boy, man. That's a lot of damage on the Nana. That's why it, it's somewhat valid. And Sans just wasn't ready right there. Now without the Vexana, will Onyx still try and make something happen? It, it is possible, it's just a lot risky. But they back away. Yeah, that's gonna be the Lord cleared out here by Geek Fam. With minor casualties, you can say. It looked like Chidera picked up the Golden Staff and CW finally with the Malefic Roar. Between these two carries from both of the teams, where is it leaning towards more? Who is doing more damage in the fight? Who will be, yes. Who will be? I, I believe it's still going to be CW. But when it comes to the, the moments before the fight breaks out, that's where Sans really shines, man. And I feel like, me personally, I don't think the Vexana is used mainly for damage. I, the damage is always very, very nice. But the utility, like the, when, you put, when you put down the Eternal Guard, when you try and go for the Terrifies, that is what really makes a, a Vexana pick that much more effective. Yeah, the utility coming in from Sans, right? Which is why maybe that's why he sees the Enchanted Talisman a little bit more valuable as compared to going full out damage. But here, if you guys play and you guys find lag, don't forget to use the max booster. Because mm -hmm. I hate lag. Do you hate lag? I hate lag, man. Maximize your connection with Game Max and also Maximize your time. Make it efficient. That's the word that Eternal really likes earlier. Mm -hmm. The 15,000 discount with Click Indomart. You can just click Indomart 15 and click your groceries very easily and improve your finances. Mm -hmm. That's what Geek are trying to do right now. They're trying to use all the promo codes that they have to try to get out of this debt. 8,000. <laughs> it's, it's a big... It's a big debt. Well, they need to be energized first, so it starts with coffee. Go get your point, coffee. That's the point. Ooh. Pretty good. Well, we'll see, but you know, another big Seven issue. Out Seven, Seven out of ten? Seven out of ten? Well, a big issue for Geek right now, by the way, is usually the Molina is a great deterrent tool. You can leave it on the ground, people walk away from it, they can't really check. But since Onik has the Grok, right, he can yeah. just walk through it and ignore it. So it's almost like one extra tool denied from Geek. And you can see a boy as Luke and Boloisky just look for a chance to try and start a fight properly, right? Without 
paying the price of a, of a huge counter engage or half an HP bar, for instance. This is so risky. Here we go. Well, charge Luke gonna be knocked up and terrified down. Sans bursts him out. And even Beloisky follows through with six death in his game right now as Boots is just zoning a boy in Chadera, isolating the dinosaur. No, they're already extinct. And still they want to take him out. A killing spree for Kyrie. 3 0 in the trade. And there's absolutely no way that Geek Fam can go for a contest on this. I mean, it was already looking bleak to begin with. Hazel, two levels behind of Kyrie. But Onik had to pull that out behind the engage that Keyboy was able to make. That's going to be a free lord for Onik in the 13th, 14th minute of the game. The clean engage. He didn't even use the flicker there. I thought it was going to be an attempt towards the backline. But no, he just thought. If I can get two members, just two members, I can make sure that the fight does break out and we can get at least a pickoff. And I think that he went for it so suddenly, so urgently, because the wave was pushing on the top side. Onik did lose a turret, but off the back of that sequence of plays, they have made it completely worth it. And with the Lord marching down right now, take a look at the items where a boy's Nana has that Divine Glaive power spike. He's going to have a lot of burst damage, but he needs to find ways for the spells to land, right? Wait for a setup, and Onyx is making it very difficult for that to happen. Definitely. I think range is a little bit of a problem for Nana, especially going against these heavy end gauge heroes like Keyboy on the Grox, oh. so that's difficult. I mean, look at that, a boy have health! Beloisky though, fine Sons, brought him back all the way. Now a few shots for the Nana, he's actually very low, but he's still able to maneuver out of it. Conceal now by Geek over to that bottom lane, trying to deal with this Lord that has charged in. It's a great defense from Geek Fam, still staying in this game. Another wave to deal with though now as Onik marches forward again, this time with the Black Dragon form. They've already utilized a lot of their resources, Geek Fam. Luke still on cooldown, but now finally getting it back with that I'm offended that he missed earlier on CW. And it's still Geek Fam actually doing a very good job at clearing. Well played to the Geeks. Well, now it gets interesting. They're at an 11, 11 close to 12k gold difference earlier, and still they're unable to crack through the base of Geek. And we know the longer the game goes, this is exactly where at least Geek used to prefer to be in, right? They can defend the base, hold as long as possible, have good high ground technically with the Nana, and they're willing to just stall this out and let Onik take some objectives in order to, to just get a chance later on, waiting for the right window to turn the tides around. How? What window though? Onyx, they're not, look at that, they're not leaving anything open. Mm -hmm. Luke misses another end gauge. It's fine, but what can Geek Fam do at this point? Sans makes it even worse by picking up Blood Wings on top of all that damage already. I think I have to wait for a big combo with the Nana, but look at Boots, man, just trying to zone. But even then, the wave gets cleared so, so yeah. fast. Oh, defensive wild charge for Monik. I think it's a good point that you made. They need to find a window, but right now they're locked up in their base. It's almost like a prison cell, and there are no windows in a prison cell. I wouldn't know. <laughs> Does that mean I should, like... <laughs> Interesting, Mirko. <laughs> what kind of experience do you have? I've never been to prison, but I've watched <laughs> movies, man. I see. That's I a great point. I thought there were, point. like, small windows in prisons. Not Yeah, and outside. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't <laughs> know. But anyway, still a 12 not a convict, lead. guys. I am not. Arashi is also not. What do you wait? Wait, what? <laughs> that be weird. Weird. I feel left out here. What do you mean? <laughs> you guys aren't. Am I a convict here? <laughs> Might be. <laughs> the Lord now is spawning, so Onik. They crafted and put boots in a position to flank. We'll see if that pays off right here. This is what they want though. Keep them out of the base and now they're going for it with a conceal. Oh, key boy. Dragon form and oh! That's a three-man! Final slash, not able to be followed up completely though. CW gets stunned in the back, but it's not going to be enough right now. As Bloisky jumps up with the vengeance right now. The transform, oh, CW's low with the nature, pop in oh, just in time. The might... eternal guard to peel Bloisky falling, oh. boots with a two-man. On that furious dive, knocks him up. Now brought back by the missiles, Chadera holding it down, terrified, and poked in that choke point. Luke is able to get the vision down, and apparently the Lord has been reset. CW's back on it though with Kyrie. one 4 zero, but Onik had lower HP bars. They have to send some of their members back again, and now it's a reset for that Lord. Kyrie's half health here. Looks like he's getting that healing back up. 13 seconds left for Beloisky to spawn. And look at this, they're trying to blitz the Lord. 
Black Dragon form now with a wild charge on the two members and an eternal guard of Akuma even longer. Two retributions, but it's Kairi who times it better. And in the Lord Pit, Ooh. it is Hazel who falls in the bag. It is a boy. Tadera is forced back, dashes out to safety. Beloy pops in that conceal, and they are alone. Two members now having to face five members from Onik and a Lord. Against all odds, against the entire world here, Boloyski and Chidera, the final ones. It looks like CW is going to be able to break oh. that inhibitor turn in the bottom side, but what? A final slash, a desperate one at that. Chidera pops in over nature. He's able to get CW low enough. They oh, no. but now he gets knocked up, wall down, and that should be it. Geek Fam clean, swept by Onik in their rematch. Wow. In the grand finals, it was. A 4-2, to two, MPLI 2022, 3-2 reverse sweep. In both instances, it was Onik winning it out, and it looks like it's the exact